I think I've figured out this whole um, preset. So um, what was really frustrating is last time I did this, um, there was some obstacles and vertical versus you know, if you do these painting demos, the last thing you want to do is vertical and basically had to kill the stream um, and then restart, which is never fun. Um, so I think uh, I, I pretty much lost everybody after that, but now I've figured it out. It's a little bit of a step, but it's a learning process. So, um, but yeah, so this is where I'm at right now. I'm going to adjust the camera just so you guys can see a little bit, but let me... Um, I think I've got everything. I'm just going to double check to make sure that my stream is up and live. And then I can see. Yeah, so that. Yeah, so that works. All right, great. So our actually alignment is pretty good. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to continue on with uh, where I was. Um, for just to recap what I did, I did this in a. Um, session last time and it was just a quick session um i basically started upside down and then after i got everything blocked in i then started putting in details uh so this was where we were for this and uh it was a lot of fun um i really enjoyed this i think i'm gonna switch over because i'm almost out of out of um What's called? Out of medium, I'm gonna switch cans in a little bit because I got a little bit more yesterday. Went to the drawing group and I did. Oh, come on, let's get off. Uh, it's nice to go do the figure painting again, so. But yeah, so there we are. And I think I've got everything in except for the note over here and I'm glad you get to work so um yeah so yeah if you're joining I was really disappointed about the, the way this the setup went for last one but it's all learning curve um I think if anything I'm going to probably just do these live and uh the best way to find out about them is just to subscribe to try and put these in um, in advance is just right now for me it's just too much uh, planning mm -hmm. so if you would like to catch live just subscribe and I'm probably gonna try and do these as much and then put a uh, put together some of these in time lapse and so that's kind of where I'm at right now is just putting these together Recording this live and then I'll download it put it in Final Cut Pro and then we'll be able to uh, Put it out so that you can watch it all in a time-lapse of the process that went on here, but um, So yeah, let's see here in news today while I'm setting up here to start making some marks uh, in news today uh, my group show in Richmond is about to end. I think this is the last week with the Glab Coast and Gallery. So if you happen to be find yourself in Richmond and you would like to um, check out some of the work that I have up there, it's up the Glab, Glab Coast and Mini Gallery so uh, for a group show. And then kind enough to invite me back. And also in other painting news, I'm doing the... Um, Gloucester Plain Air in Gloucester, Virginia. Not to be confused with the Gloucester in um, New England. So, uh, but I've done that one as well. But that's a little bit of a car trip, so. So let's hear, what else is new? Um, I'm looking to probably do some more Plain Air videos. I just finished up a large uh, commission painting and I'm going to be varnishing it this weekend. Once it dries, I'll be shipping it out to California to get framed. Um, and 
it's a really kind of cool piece because it's a it's to cover their TV. They've got this big, I mean, it's bigger than my drawing board. Um, I had to get a, I had to use asphalt board for this, uh, for it. Um, don't ask me what asphalt board is, but other than uh, it was a smooth surface and easy to cut, custom cut. And I, so I had to use asphalt board to mount the canvas because I got to roll the canvas to ship it out. I can't, it's just too big to ship in the mail uh, without worry of getting it damaged <clears throat> without doing like massive expensive crate. And it's got to be framed anyways. So that's kind of what's in the news. So I'm going to be looking, um, I'm done with commissions for uh, any time. I think in the um, <clears throat> foreseeable future, there I've just got too many personal projects. Plus, I really want to be doing more YouTube videos and just kind of painting some fun things. So that's another reason. So I <clears throat> hope everybody's doing well tonight. Um, this is just going to be a short session. Um, but I was really, really ticked off about the... Um, I was really ticked off about the other one in the rotation and I thought I had it all s figured out and so to go live and then people are on and then it's not going the way it's supposed to. Um, yeah, it was a real bum deal. So I'm not, I've got this light on, I'm turning it on and off because I realize that when you have too intense of a light, uh, sometimes your perception of value changes. <clears throat> and so... Uh, from time to time, you may see me uh, turn off this light. It's a new light I got from Vecchia uh, on Amazon. It's uh, battery powered, and it's a really, really uh, so far I like it because it's a warmer temperature. It's almost a, it's a neutral tone. It's not warm. It's not super warm. It's not super cool, but it's about the right kind of light that I if I would want to have. Um, the other lights I've been using were uh, Belkin. They're good lights, uh, <clears throat> but I needed two of them to do any plein air work. Let me open up my can of water here. Mm. And so, yeah. And I've been doing demos for my students in the daytime and worked on an almost identical scene, but from a different vantage point and a little bit larger. Kind of like, man, I should have done it for this one. But <clears throat> um, I may, uh, I just, I've already started it, so it's doing a time lapse is kind of moot at that at this point. But uh, it's more of a demo for my students to see. And they've been teaching them values and color theory, which has been fun. <clears throat> Especially, you know, giving them something simple to paint. Um, and so basically, I gave them the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. <clears throat> And then gave them an orange with a orange leaves on it, so they had to learn how to mix their colors and learn, you know, to work with warm temperature and cool temperature colors. And so that was fun, and did a demo for them. And so it was really fun to really uh, see them work hard at it, and they certainly have worked hard at it. And, <clears throat> because they haven't really done any painting yet before. So it's fun to watch them, you know, start out with just the basic painting concepts and then go from there. All right, so I'm, I'm basically, this session's really going to be about me adding detail. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> pardon me. I got the heater on, so my it's a little dry in here. So just to let you guys know, as far as the color recap, I've got titanium white, uh, and I've got um, cad yellow light, yellow ochre, 
cad orange, cad red medium, or no, actually cad red light, and pardon me, lizard crimson here, and then if that wasn't enough, I've got, um, oh, come on, Cap, get on there. And then I've also got the Transparent Earth Red over here. So I kind of crammed everything over here just so you guys could see. And then last but not least is Turquoise. Um, it's Thalo Turquoise. That's it. I was trying to remember it. I punctured the... As in last one, I punctured the uh, paint tube, um, and that's why you see duct tape on these now because it helps uh, keep it from keep it from puncturing the tube. The ends on here can be pretty, uh, I wouldn't say sharp, but pretty rigid. And you know, when you're cramming paint into a bag quickly, especially in a plain air or drawing group, they can kind of puncture. So that's what I've got there. So those are the colors that I've been using for this painting, if you're kind of curious about that. So we'll just mix some grays in here, and we're just going to quickly mark in some spots. This one's a little red. So, hope everybody's doing good. Um... Like I said, this is pretty much unannounced, so I really wanted to get to the bottom without the pressure of having everybody log in and watch me fumble <laughs> like I did the last one. That was not fun. <clears throat> not fun in the, the, the light, the least. So... So yeah, I'll be doing Gloucester in Gloucester, Virginia Plain Air event, which will be, uh, I guess they announced that. Um, I got in. It's a juried event, so they jury. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's an invitational event, not juried. It's uh, an invitational, which means kind of got to be on the radar, which I wasn't. I just showed up to last year's quick draw event and. Um, I guess the judge decided that they liked my painting for the community artist, which, you know, means that any of the locals can compete. And what I didn't know was is that the um, first place means you get invited to do the event um, with the inv inv invitational artist. So, yeah, that's, I guess, one way to get juried in. <laughs> I'm the only juried artist for this of that everyone else is invitational. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, I'm looking forward to it. It's it's not that far from me and it's I, I really enjoy painting um the Virginia area, so it'll be fun. And let's see here. Let's loosen up a little bit because I still I just feel a little bit I've been teaching uh today and then i was teaching in the evening i had my last digital painting class tonight and so they all graduated and <clears throat> i have my next painting class and that'll be april 10th so if you're in the norfolk hampton roads area and you'd like to know how to sign up for that just uh, shoot me a message and I'll send you, forward you along the info. Um, it's actually hosted by my school and for their evening class. And it's all I do is I just show up and paint. and I mean, show up and teach. I don't even have to worry about uh, anything else. I don't do grades. I just help people with painting concepts and have fun, and yeah, it's a blast. And yeah, it's, it's an absolute blast. So <clears throat> let's 
put a little bit of pink over here. So this one was a little, this one was basically half hazard last class. I mean, last, not class, last session. I think I was really upset that I couldn't, I did not get the orientation right and pretty much just said, hey, welcome to my stream and <laughs> bye. <laughs> so, um, if you have a question, I've got my iPad up as well, so I should be able to see any questions if anybody wants to hit me up with a question. I'll keep that in mind. I mean, not keep that in mind. I'll just keep watch of that. And let's see here. We're going to do a little bit of yellow. Hmm. So I've been working with, um, working on my studio and, and uh, getting a new setup. And part of the hard work in setting up was make sure I could get this on the screen and it fit and I could comfortably sit down because I've been dealing with plantar fasciitis and with painting so much and standing still it was just aggravating it a lot <clears throat> and so I had to kind of come up with how I could set this up so this is my second time doing this stream with um, the new setup and it's quite comfortable so I'm really enjoying that part of it. And it'll be fun to work on some longer sessions as well, which is another reason is I wanted to make sure I could do some painting <coughs> in a longer style session. So let's go ahead and see about putting in some of the Sirens, the, the um, I guess, what do you call those sirens or not necessarily sirens? These are the police, the police lights at top. I don't know what you call them. I want to say sirens, but <clears throat> I know they're not. It could probably be blue or red, and I don't know. I feel like kind of going old school a little bit and doing red and then blue. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking here. Just a little bit of red. And then I'll get some blue. Hmm, I'm mixing it over here. Yeah, I meant to mix over here. There we go. Let's see if we can get a little bit of more blue in here. Let's see if that will work. Hmm, I'm not quite happy with that. Let's see if we can. There. That. A little bit better. <clears throat> Probably need to have a little bit darker, right? There. Yeah, that makes sense. And then underneath. Probably a little bit of cast shadow on here too, because that light's gonna. That's too dark. Let's put a little bit there. That feels, and then we'll do the same thing for the red. So the sirens in my reference photo that I took from San Francisco are not in there, so. <clears throat> I need to add just a little bit there. I think that reads pretty well. <clears throat> it looks good to me. Um, I think I'm going to destroy some things here because it's just a little too brushy for me. Just not really appreciating what I've got up here. And a part of me thinks it needs to be dumbed down a little bit. Just too... Yeah, it's too much. Oops. Uh, 
And then let's mix a little bit darker. Oh, where's my palette knife? <coughs> there we go. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit darker here. I'm using crimson. Throw it in a little bit. how far that goes and see here no. All right. so here there Yeah, I just part of me wants to dumb this down a little bit and, you know, I don't know, I'm just used to get somewhere where I can actually feel like I'm pushing things quickly and still be experimenting and I think that's kind of where this is going. Sometimes I rely on brushes too much and I just don't feel like I'm getting that looseness that I really wanted out of it. <clears throat> yeah, that's a little bit better. Sometimes the light doesn't help though, so it's good to maybe turn down the light a little bit. And see. change the angle of that window there. I think that's a little bit better. Can we darken here? I really want to darken it. From underneath. I just something just isn't jiving about those lines. <coughs> we'll see about I don't know. I'm gonna switch to a different brush. <coughs> Let's try this one. We'll just do a hog's hair brush. So let's do that. So uh, I'm intending to just spend maybe thir uh, another 30 minutes on this and see where this will take me. Let's see. Um, let's see here. But yeah, if you um, happen to watch this and want to give me some feedback, anybody out there would like to see, uh, have a particular subject matter they'd like to see me paint? Um, just as long as it's, as I was telling my evening classes, it don't give me any Disney characters. <laughs> I, I'm all Disneyed out, especially with Frozen. Uh, when you have a daughter. <laughs> and, hear the frozen scene over and over and over again it's like what yeah <clears throat> but yeah if anybody has like you know if they would like to see me do a figure or a portrait or you know another street scene or something else you know let me know um i'm usually pretty game to paint just about try and paint everything Can get a little darker here. There. Try and paint a little bit looser. Yeah. There we go. We turn it up a little bit. Oh, there we go. I've really got to figure out the lighting system. I feel like if I tone down the lighting too much then it gets harder to see but so maybe I need to raise it up a little bit so that's helping a little bit I don't know if you can review though if that's any better so like I said this is just 
me still experimenting with how to get this live stream set up in a way that's the most efficient. All right. Let's get some mass shapes in here. Mm -hmm. Let's get a little bit bigger there. Yeah, that's better. Hmm. Just want to kind of get, I don't want to put too much detail in here, so I'm not trying to, kind of want this a little bit of mystery space, so I'm not trying to fill it all the way out. I just want just enough to kind of make everybody, <clears throat> make the viewer kind of question what they're looking at. Um, go from there. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> I had to do a lot of work on the cop car to get it to look right, um, even though I started it upside down. There were some things in there that just weren't jiving still, so that took a little bit of planning. But overall, I feel like it came out pretty good, especially returning back to it the next day. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, the cop car looks pretty decent. And as far as the mic goes, I don't know if I need to have a better mic. Maybe I need an omnidirectional mic. I'm not sure yet. I did get a new router, a wireless router, so I could have more consistent speeds. You might remember, <clears throat> uh, if you've been following along, where I was doing a digital procreate session and what happened was the power went out we had a huge storm came through and i kid you not literally maybe about um an hour into it maybe not even an hour and it just pfft, gone like power outage and everything that was another reason why to do the phone because i could at least switch to um if the power went out at least switch to um cellular and the light that I have on here is battery powered <laughs> so I try to mitigate that um, yeah that was another that was like two fails back to back which was not fun but it happened so what can you do you just try to learn from it and move on all right I'm a little bit happier with that I mean I still need some a little bit more grunge in here this is too clean yeah, I want this to be dirty, feel lived in, and it's not quite there yet. Let's see here, we're going to take this and So yeah, kind of grunge this up a little bit. Make it interesting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, hope everybody's having a good night. Is anybody painting on anything interesting? On their own? If so, what is it? Is it a landscape? Portrait? From life or from reference, imagination. I've been doing some imagination small ones, um, but they kind of came to a halt till I had to work on the garage. So maybe I'll do some ones of that as well. That would be fun just to do some imagination um, oil sketches just for compositional purposes. 
see if we can get this to brighten up a little bit. <clears throat> Yeah, that looks nice there. It's starting to feel like it's popping a little bit. And I feel like I need some better ambient light over here. This orange isn't doing it for me. So we'll see if I can. I mean, I want it to be a, like a warm interior. So I may have to. Put a little bit of blue in there, but let's just see what we can kind of get. That feels a little bit better. Maybe get some signage in there. So something that's there, but it's not too spelled out. I hate those. You know, it looks a little bit better there. Let's see. Maybe a little bit of a sign or something there. Okay. While I'm here, just trying to touch up some of this stuff. There. It looks good. The same over here on the screen and here and here and there's something that works a little bit so one of the things that my I was talking to my students about when they're atmosphere and they were asking as far as what makes atmosphere. And I, I, I kind of was, you know, that's a good question. I think the first thing that makes atmosphere is, you know, the sun's position or the light and then the temperature of the light. And then as far as the next thing, at least in, you know, my speculation um, is how much particles are in the atmosphere and what, you know, because I think, you know, the particles in the air can make a difference between, you know, what is, uh, you know, <clears throat> what is, what is, you know, have something where it kind of softens objects in the distance and I know that uh, one example kind of came to mind that I thought that this was indicative of for atmospheres on a clear sunny day on the ocean you know the horizon line is you know pretty sharp whereas on a whereas on a cloudy stormy day the horizon the horizon line is, is, you know, somewhat obscured and can be, you know, completely uh, unidentifiable because of, you know, depending on how much atmosphere is there. And so that was just one example I was trying to think to kind of illustrate why um, atmosphere contributes to the mood of a painting scientifically kind of <clears throat> so the more particles you have in the air you know the the more softer the objects in the distance are they're not they're not as clear and the the tones are muted one thing we discussed was particularly with reflections And reflections, um, one of the things we talked about was, you know, when things are reflecting the water, so if this was like a wet street, um, uh, objects that are 
in higher value when they're reflected in the water they're you know two or three shades darker but things that are darker are usually a couple of one or two shades lighter and at least that's been my observations for most reflections of water of course those all get thrown out the door when you kind of see these people who are in these um uh, have these photographs of these uh, wonderful places and the, the lake is crystal clear and the sky is crystal clear and you can't tell what's upside down and what's right side up. So that's why I hate telling people, oh, this is a rule. Because there's al There always seems to be exceptions to the rule. And so I try to tell students my ideas of that, you know, these are just my thoughts and, you know, observations and they're not set in stone. They're just guides. That's it. I think the only rule, the only rule really that should be adhered to is in the guitar shop. Nobody should play Stairway to Heaven in the guitar shop. I think that's the unwritten rule to any um, guitar shop. And if you've watched Wayne's World, you know exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> if you've not, then go watch Wayne's World because uh, that's, you'll get it. Maybe not, but yeah. It's funny, when my son was big into drums and we went to a music store there was somebody at the guitar place playing Stairway to Heaven. He goes, Dad, Dad, they're not supposed to be playing that. <laughs> it's funny. All right. <clears throat> so trying to add a little bit of texture here and some, some kind of details to help get this off the ground, so to speak. And not so, not so limited. So I'm just kind of looking at the f reference photo that I had and just trying to gauge where I should put value. I want, I want, I, I want a blue light over there. That's what I want. I want, I want a cooler light to fade off in here. That's what I want. I want to push this column forward a little bit and have some something over here. I'm not sure what. I want something over here to help. Um, I don't know if this is going to do it or not, but seems to help a little bit. I probably need to put a little bit of warmth in here to make it pull up a little bit. So try and just not overdo it, but just put a little bit of warmth. <clears throat> a little bit more than that. Hmm. Yeah, that that definitely makes the column pull forward by adding some of the blue over there. And I wonder if it's worth putting a little bit more in there. I don't know what that is, but it gives some kind of a relationship to it. I think that might help a little bit. Sometimes, yeah, I feel like you got to kind of see what the photo or your reference or whether you're painting from life and then ask, you know, what are you really trying to do? And then taking what you know from 
painting and then applying those ideas to things that have been changed by you and to see if, you know, can you get them to work and alter it a little bit. I feel like this sign here would be kind of reflecting harder on the edge of that right here. So I'm going to try to, yeah. And you'd almost think that they would, there would be a headlight, and there is. And I just should probably put it right here. There. That works. But I'm not sure what that red is over there. I think it's just me slap dashing around trying to get things to work. So maybe I should just mute it out because it doesn't match. Yeah, that, that feels better. So sometimes you end up with things that I think work good and then sometimes you don't. And you just got to kind of go by what your intent of the painting is to do. And then not so, not overthink certain things or be open to things that could change. Hmm. Interesting. That bit of a, I'm not sure what this reflection is. I'd like the idea of trying to get the car to look shiny. Yeah, I definitely like that idea of trying to get the car to look shiny. Here, so we're gonna imagine a new car off the lot. Yeah, oh, that looks kind of cool. I like that. I'm not sure what there's kind of looks like a star here, but that looks too old fashioned for a star, for at least for me. I mean, I know that's what's on the San Francisco, but I kind of like the idea of something else, and I'm not sure I'm gonna. I don't know. I just I just feel like it's not it's not there yet. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I want some kind of police sign, but I'm not sure. And I'm gonna do what I feel will, you know, be better. I'm not sure yet, but it it I'm gonna be thinking about it. So we got about 15 minutes more. So yeah. Actually, coming along much better now. I feel like things are falling into place a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of. Hmm. I'm not sure that this needs to be white though for the verbiage here. I think it's kind of. Hmm. Maybe it might be better orange than. Yeah, it is. It's, it's for me. It's it's gonna be better orange. That orange feel to it. So let's just go ahead and put the verbiage in. Or at least imply verbiage. I'm not gonna try and hand write that out. That's just too much. It's overkill. Anybody been to this place in San Francisco? Maybe you recognize it. <laughs> I don't even remember where it is, except it's on Jones Street, and um, it's the Nazareth Hotel. So I guess if you Googled that, you'd probably be able to find out where I was. All I know is, is that not too long after that, after the second time I, I, I photographed this, second time um, the first time I went here was in 2007 the second time was 2018 and the second time I was uh, I had a lot of gear and I had a boot because my foot my other foot had uh, issues and I was wearing a boot so 
I literally had people asking me if <clears throat> where where I was from. Uh, I was, you know, I they were telling me I hadn't seen you around here before, and I was like, <laughs> and then it, it dawned on me after I had lunch with a friend, uh, and she said. You know, you blend a little too well into the streets. And that's why she couldn't find me. <laughs> um, yeah, with the street elements. So that's, that was it. And I remember after I finished this, I just kind of got to, uh, there was a couple other places I wanted to photograph. And I got to this one place not too long after I got here. And I immediately got on the corner and I could just tell that, all eyes were on me, and that I was like, oh, man, I'd been getting away with it for a while, but at this point, I was in a place where I was pretty much not in my element. Um, when you got a boot on, you're not running pretty fat. You're not running at all, and so thank God for uh, lift, because it... Uh, the lift driver got me out real quick, and uh, I remember he came. Uh, he came and it was. I mean, literally, I put it on lift, and the request, and the guy was there within not even five minutes. He was there, and I remember him helping me get my gear into the trunk, and he goes, "What are you doing out here?" And I was like, "I'm just taking photo references for painting," and he's like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So let's maybe make this a little bit brighter. I don't know. Maybe make this stand out. It ain't come out too much though. Yeah, it doesn't look natural. Let's try and go over it again. And again, yeah, that white just looks nasty. There, that's better. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some signs, uh, some verbiage here. When I do verbiage, I just do vertical lines when I can. I think back in the day, I would sit there and try and do the L, the I, the Q. And it's just, eh, it doesn't matter. I mean, the overall thing is really, what am I trying to capture? Do I just want everybody to read, you know, the liquor? No. It doesn't matter. Yeah, there we go. I need to go brighter in here with some white. Um, last time I just really threw this in quickly. I don't even know if this is the actual sign color. Um, it wasn't lit the uh, second time I was there. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't lit the first time. In fact, the first time this, the Nazareth was lit and it was in blue. So I just assumed. So my wife says I get in trouble is when I assume. But, um, I just assumed that this would have been more of like a pink, but maybe it's not. But it is now in my painting. Yeah, my painting, it's, it's pink. How are we doing on time? We are at 10 minutes. So, didn't make as much fast progress as I did the first one. But, I'll take it because I've been working all day. And I really was wanting to figure out why the orientation zapped me. The first time I, at the beginning of the last session, it's really bugging me. So that's kind of one of those things. That's part of me is like, I've got to figure it out. And I figured, I said, well, let me just set an unannounced one. And if it totally blows up in my face, it's okay. Nobody was really here. So I want to do something over here. I'm not sure what, what I'm going to do. I don't want to overspell out this area because I, I, I think I'm going to have a person 
here. I really, really don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. No, that didn't work out. Let's go back over here. Yeah, that's not working. Hmm. I think maybe it's just I'm tired because I've been at it all day between doing several different painting demos. Sometimes you get a little burned out, but at least get something going. Just maybe a little bit of a light over here might be good. Well, it's lighter, but it's going to be warmer. I don't know why I dived into the blue. Let's warm up that area for just a little bit right there. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to be careful, though, about adding detail here without spilling it because I want the viewer to feel like that's in distance without pushing it too far. So I think, if anything, I've got to put some cooler, make some cooler colors in there. Maybe I should have made this green. Maybe that's what I'll try to do in the last couple of minutes is let's play around with the green. Let it sit for a day. Maybe this doesn't need to be orange. Maybe this is green. And it'll help feel like it's pushed back further. And not as, as close up. Maybe. Maybe that relationship will work a little bit better. Maybe not, but I'm willing to try it. Hmm. I'm not sold on it right now, but... Yeah. Need it. Hmm. Yeah, because I'm going to have a figure literally in this area here, so I don't want anything to really stand out or cause a distraction from the figure that I put in there and I'll show put in last. So <clears throat> hmm. What else are I probably put an emergency Yeah, we'll put a little bit of an emergency over here. There's an emergency thing here, so that that kind of works a little bit. Mm. To Put a little bit of blue on it and mute it down. Let's try now. Hmm. It's a little too bright. I don't want to mute it down a little bit. I don't want to cool it off too much. There. That's good. I like that. So. I'll probably. Let's see here. What else could I possibly put in here without creating too much solve problem solving between now and then? Not sure. Maybe a little bit of white in this area here. This is intense area yeah I'm not sure yet I may have to darken it darken up here a little bit or just threw some cooler colors up top there's some variance I'll tighten everything later, but I don't know. That might that might help. Of course, I've got to go and 
darken those, but I'll deal with that next session. Next session, yeah. That's that's the ticket. Tommy Fulanagan. That's it. That's the name I couldn't remember the last time. I was like, yeah, that's the ticket. And I couldn't remember the SNL characters. Tommy Flanagan. Uh, John Lovitz. That's some very retro SNL. Um, if you haven't checked that out. So let's see here. I think I'm going to go and put a one-way sign here. Or at least a sign. Maybe it doesn't need to be a one-way sign. Just, just a sign. And a little bit cooler on the temperature. Yeah. There we go. And of course, it's got to be red. So let's start with a lizard and crimson a little bit. And we'll build out. Mm -hmm. Built with the pure red. Maybe a little bit of a orange, a little bit of touch of white, and then red. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Then go back to a little bit more pure red. That's too much orange. Just needs to be a peak of orange. There. I like that. Okay. So. A little bit slow, slow jamming today on the paint session. So. Um, I appreciate you hanging out and. Paint along with me. Maybe you're painting along. Maybe you're just you know, stuck in your office or at home just jamming out. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging in and putting up with me. Um, I'm really thrilled that I figured out the whole orientation thing and pre-setting up one. So. It was really frustrating because I had every I thought I had everything together and I didn't, and I totally botched it. So, lesson learned. Anywho, um, so I will be back. This is not done. Uh, I'm going to be back recording another session, and I'll be adding a figure in here. I think if it works, if not, then we'll just paint it out. Add some more details over here. And yeah, maybe insinuate a little bit of light coming down and some smaller details. But right now I'm a little fried, but I, I just at least figured this out and I'm really happy about that. So thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I wish you all well and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next session. And you guys all have a great night and I'll catch you later. Bye.